Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we will start with uh, some key concepts in international relations. So when diplomats, when they speak, when they interact, when they converse, they use many terms, national interest, balance of power, collective security, so on and so forth. So today and tomorrow are dedicated to wrapping up these key concepts. Unfortunately, not many understand what do these concepts mean. Very easily we term someone as anti-national or nationalist. So today we will understand what does that even mean. Okay. So we'll start today's episode with a very interesting video. It is in Hindi, but uh, again, there are, there will be trans transcript as well. So go through it. मोदी आए दिन फॉरेन विजिट्स पर जाते हैं अब इन विजिट से देश का फायदा हो ना हो एक इंसान का जरूर हो रहा है वो है गौतम अडानी स्क्रोल के एनालिसिस ने दिखाया है कि पीएम मोदी की कई डिप्लोमेटिक विजिट्स या मीटिंग्स के कुछ ही महीने बाद अडानी ग्रुप को उन्हीं कंट्रीज से डील्स मिली है इसके तीन एग्जाम्पल्स देखते हैं डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी में केन्या के प्रेजिडेंट इंडिया आए ठीक तीन महीने बाद अडानी ग्रुप ने वहाँ का नायरोबी एयरपोर्ट रन करने का प्रपोजल सबमिट किया और जून में केनियन गवर्नमेंट ने ये एयरपोर्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान अप्रूव भी कर दिया वो तो जब इस एयरपोर्ट पर हड़ताल हुई और लोगों ने इस प्रोजेक्ट को लीगली चैलेंज किया तब केन्या के हाईकोर्ट ने ही ये डील सस्पेंड कर दी अगला है बांग्लादेश जून 2015 में पीएम मोदी बांग्लादेश गए इसके सिर्फ दो महीने बाद बांग्लादेश गवर्नमेंट ने अडानी से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी खरीदने का एमओयू साइन किया वहाँ की ओपोजिशन ने इसका विरोध किया कहा की कि बिजली महंगी है और की यह अग्रीमेंट पीएम मोदी के प्रेशर में हुई है और इस साल बांग्लादेश की सरकार बदलने के बाद यह अग्रीमेंट अब खतरे में है अब चलते हैं श्रीलंका नवम्बर ट्वेंटी में श्रीलंका के प्रेसिडेंट पीएम मोदी ऐसी मिले और पांच महीने बाद अडानी को वहाँ एक विंड एनर्जी प्रोजेक्ट मिल गया बाद में श्रीलंका के इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड के चीफ ने इस प्रोजेक्ट की सच्चाई रिवील की उन्होंने कहा कि पीएम मोदी से मिलने के बाद प्रेसिडेंट राजपक्षा ने उन्हें बताया था कि नरेंद्र मोदी उन पर प्रेशर डाल रहे हैं ये विंड एनर्जी प्रोजेक्ट अडानी को देने के लिए मलेशिया वियतनाम तंजानिया सिंगापुर इसराइल इन सभी कंट्रीज में ऐसे बहुत से और एग्जाम्पल्स है इससे सवाल उठता है की इंडिया की फॉरन पॉलिसी इंडिया के इंटरेस्ट में है या एक ऐसे बिजनेस के जिस पर खुद Okay, so whatever we may study today and tomorrow, you will see a direct question around twenty to thirty marks in your optional paper. Okay, and again, you just have to follow through on our episodes and the answers that I tell you, how to go about writing those answers. But before we, you know. Get down to discussing about the eventualities of questions that you will be asked in the examination. Let's see what's happening. Thoughts on this video? In fact, this video does not cover quite a few other things. In twenty fifteen, there was land boundary agreement between India and Bangladesh. You all know that. Anyone knows about that land boundary agreement, India and Bangladesh? No one knows about it. Basis are agreement. There was exchange of enclaves from Indian side and Bangladeshi side. Do you know how much of land India transferred to Bangladesh? It was seventeen thousand one sixty acres of land. In return, what did India get? India got seven thousand one one zero acres of land. It's all out there in public domain. Not making this up. Now my question is, what was India at loss? It depends upon who you are asking, right? Was that decision taken in taken in India's interest? Again, depends on what who you are asking. But one thing I know happened after that agreement. Adani Ji's group secured a contract. To supply sixteen hundred megawatts of electricity to Bangladesh. 
so national interest in 2020 21 sri lanka faced a severe economic downturn what did india do india extended approximately 4 billion dollars of financial assistance to sri lanka was that done in national interest of course we can make argument that sri lanka is our neighbor bangladesh is our neighbor afghanistan is our neighbor pakistan is our neighbor but then we should also have neighborly relations with them but looks like those countries do not have pro india stance they have pro adani ji stance 4 billion dollars was not jay shankar ji's money but modi's private money it's your money tax payers money we need to understand what did we gain out of it simple thing right you invest money we see what do we get in return i do not know about us but adani ji got a contract just a few months later he got a contract to develop western container terminal at the colombo port again out there in public india buys israeli missiles right we pay a lot of money to israel israel gets money we get missiles i think in 2022 the year could change maybe 1 or 22 gets upon it just a few months time span india buys missiles adani ji gets another contract from israel haifa port extremely profitable venture for adani ji and then we say that adani ji stocks are rising because you know it's a marvelous company the question is is he the government i'm just asking questions based is whatever is publicly available this happens few years later this that happened not accusing anyone blaming anyone just asking questions this is out there in public Let's watch a video. We watched this few classes ago, but let's watch it again. Kargil. Let's say which was an active conflict. A lot of Indian journalists were allowed to go and you know look at Kargil, report from there. There's been no single journalist, not even a Godi media journalist, a friendly journalist, who has been allowed to go to Ladakh and report from there. Twenty-six out of the sixty-five patrolling points that are in Ladakh, India is not able to access. The Chinese have come and physically blocked the patrolling point. They've deployed their soldiers. They've put, I think, four or five vehicles, and they are standing there. So you cannot cross that and go to those five patrolling points. Same is the case in Demchok. The Chinese have come and pitched their tents there. Essentially. you have lost control over areas which you had control over till 2020 where you were demonstrated by the way these are the points made by someone who has served in the army okay not by a random nationalist someone who has served in the army dedicated his time energy in the service of india stably exercising control so sita we have not heard from the prime minister till date explaining why what he meant what he said on 19th of june in that all all, all all party meeting, all, all party yeah. meeting na koi gussa hai na koi gussa hua hai what did he what did he mean lays report uh, for example karakoram pass karakoram pass had free access to civilian indian administration officials policemen and military till 2020 after the 20 there are indian cameras there there are chinese camera there on top of karakoram pass there is a mound of rocks which decides that this is the this is that is essentially patrolling point number 1 it is the since 2020 the chinese are saying if an indian official has to come mm. they have to be informed in advance and the indian military is asking indian civilian administration officials to follow those norms the indian the, they have to inform the indian military then the indian army will inform the chinese then the chinese will say yes then they will go and this is not what i am saying this is the sp sp of le saying in a report and the karakoram pass is the is yeah look at the source government source superintendent of police saying this 
is the last point on the on Indian maps, right? No, is, is is essentially, as the line of control is, otherwise it would be something else. If you go by the actual maps, right. uh, which exist in our in our imagination, right. it would be something else. But if you look at the line of actual control, right. it is essentially the last. Uh, it is essentially the first point or the last point. Now, now, now tell me, Sushant. Obviously, uh, the situation which has now prevailed for four years uh, didn't happen overnight, uh, and it didn't happen by happens uh, by coincidence that you know simply Chinese. Um, found opportunities and then they... Uh, I We've seen this. They will talk about, you know, how the officials, how they, you know, wrote to the PMO, the Home Minister, and how larks were the responses. They never responded and when they responded, they said, you know, do whatever you like. Do whatever you think is appropriate. But we elected these officials. We did not elect army officers. It has to be in a political executive decision. You're not Pakistan. In India, state controls the military, not the other way around. Now let's read this. Why do you think this is happening? India China passenger flights to resume after four years. Discussed matter. China was pressing India to restart direct passenger flights, but New Delhi was resisting. India has tightened scrutiny of investment from China, banned hundreds of popular apps. India passenger flights to resume after four years. In June, China was pressing India to restart direct passenger flights. New Delhi, was government of India is resisting that. What all did we read? We also read that India has tightened scrutiny of investment from China. And we all know this. India banned hundreds of apps, severed the passenger route. But now read these articles. And that's a good stance. I mean, I'm not questioning that stance. In national security, you should take those stance. This is also happening this year. Adhani is forming a subsidiary in China to carry out business. It's another one. Let's read this. Here the opposition party is merely raising questions, okay? And that's the job of the opposition. There seems to be some link. Now let me ask you a very interesting question. What do you think are India's national interests? Who define these national interests? A few years ago, talking to Chinese was not in our national interest. Today it is. A few years ago, Atal Bari Vajpayee ji or Modi ji taking a detour to Lahore was in our national interest. But today it is not. He himself went, right, to Pakistan. So what is this national interest?
India's national interest is to ensure that India is secure. What is that security? Our border security. We don't give out the posts the way we are giving out in China in around the Karakoram. India's national interest is to ensure our economy is secure. Hedge fund money, private equity money coming into India from China, China route, quite devastating. But now my question is who is refining, who is resigning? This is in our national interest, that is not. Thoughts, anyone? We've all, we've all heard this term, right? National interest, national interest. You are anti-national, he's anti-national. So is Adani ji the greatest patriot ever born or is he anti-national? We've also seen delegations on the SEBI chief. Nothing will happen to her. Why? Because she's implanted by Dhani ji. Don't you think lateral entry has become a scam in a way? Look at all the chiefs of all the lateral entrants. When SEBI chief were from the civil services, I don't think this was a situation. Look at the exams, how our exams are conducted. NTA, I think lateral entrant. UPSC also has now some lateral entrants. Usually the SEBI chief post used to go to an IS officer. Someone has been in the government, someone who doesn't have those linkages ideally. You go to that post, that's not the case. Am I audible to all of you? You have no thoughts? Asamya? Uh, so from what we just saw, like all the evidences, it seems like the national interest is more of a personal interest in current times. Uh, so I don't know if it's left to be national anymore. Okay. Bankert, what do you think? In general, uh, national interest is not just a one area, it's a whole what I feel is there are many broad constructs to the national interest. Even a climate change could also be a natural interest. National interest, I would put it in that way. It has many facets. Now, what from whatever we have seen, up to a very great extent, they got compromised. Okay. Let me show you another article. Now, is this person anti-national or who? Prabir Prakashta was arrested last year. But his outlet was financially backed by a network pushing Chinese propaganda. But now Indian Supreme Court, Supreme Court is now saying this. This was illegal. Release him. For one year, he went into jail, sat in jail. Judiciary is saying it, that anti-terrorism law was applied illegally.
if connections were to be built we can build those connections on adani ji also modi ji also very easy to build those connections business elites when they engage with china there are no links but on journalists when there are linkages you know you are anti national so now the question is what does this tell us about who controls the narrative of national interest in simple terms it suggests that those in power can shape the narrative to suit their interest now go back to previous season isn't this what robert michel also said in his iron law of oligarchy what was it what was that idea yes myra so he said that few powerful elites group of elites control a majority of the resources as well as they control the narratives and propaganda as well yeah robert michel argued that elites tend to dominate elites tend to shape policies perhaps their interests are national interests elites could be defining national interests based on their own priorities not the public's priority as public i want accountability for my taxes i want security of my life liberty property i can eat whatever i want to eat i can wear whatever i want to wear at whatever time i want to do that i do not care what is your chest size number as prime minister i don't care about that why does it matter to me i want to ensure my borders are safe because that's why i'm paying taxes you took my taxes to ensure safety of my life liberty property you took my taxes for that not to ensure that one person thrives and makes billions and trillions out of it we are always told that national interests are strategic goals goals that a nation prioritizes to ensure its survival security prosperity but then is that really true this is what we are seeing so robert michel says national interest is often shaped by powerful elites and india is not alone let me be very clear i'm just being honest i'm not you know criticizing india i'm just being brutally honest that's my utmost duty with all of you there's no need to be chanting bharat mata ki jai and raping or urinating in public be true to yourself that's the greatest service you can do to your ethics to your value system the aesthetics are the aesthetics and we have seen those stories spokesperson of bjp talking about india first india first but his daughter is an american citizen his son is american citizen his daughter studies in the us son studies in the us he also has business interest in america but india first india first when he goes to up india first bihar india first Yes, India first. But yes, India first thing is not India first alone. It is Pakistan first. It is America first. Argentina first. All rising. Look at Pakistan. You have fascination fascination with Pakistan. Pakistan is also a very funny state. I've told you in the past that in other countries, states. a state controls a military but in pakistan what happens military controls a state and as a result what is happening in pakistan in most countries military serves a state they are the defenders of borders protectors of the people's will 
servant to the democratically elected government. But then what happens in Pakistan? It's one of the few countries. Military has massive, massive say in governance. And not because they're answerable to elected officials. In fact, elected officials are answerable to them. Look at their foreign policy, analyze it. Look at their national security, analyze it. Look at its cultural narrative. You will understand Pakistan the minute you understand the very fact that military elites, they are not just soldiers. They are the kingmakers. It's not about the people, what they think is best for their country. It's about what military thinks is best for your country. For funding, for influence, for maintaining heightened alert all the time. The narrative of security is molded to justify an iron grip on power. And they have this control over the media also. National narratives in Pakistan are carefully curated. There is threat from India, instability in Afghanistan. They don't care about people, they care about power. They will sell off Pakistan and they have done that to ensure that they are in power. I really hope nothing of that sort happened in India. What do Pakistanis care for? They care about healthcare, education, economic opportunity. How easy or difficult their life is. Do they care what's happening in India? Ideally, they should not if they're not brainwashed, but they are brainwashed. Something similar is happening in India also. Getting brainwashed. Why? Because elites, they're defining national interest based on their own priorities rather than public's priority. Businesses, they tie up with few political parties and they run the country for their own benefit, not country's benefit. And here we are debating Hindu, Muslim, we're debating BJP, Congress. Never discussing, you know, how to make India a country where your life is safe, secure. One very, very interesting thing about national interest is that they are very fluid. Keep changing. They change over time, they change with different situations. A few years ago, talking to Chinese was anti-national. But today, when Adhanaji invests in China, narrative may change. Did you go through that recent newspaper article? I think advertisement, the huge advertisement. Ek hai to safe hai. Millions of dollars were spent on it. Your money. If you read through it, if you look at the photo of it, you will realize it's missing one very interesting gap of Muslims. And that's okay. It's their narrative. But what happens when the same leaders, when they go to UAE, Saudi Arabia, when they're seen forcefully hugging them, what happens? So it looks like this changes, this narrative changes, which is where you are. What happens to ideology? Ideolo ideology takes back seat to practical needs. Beef exporting companies are giving you political donations. So national interest can override ideological positions when necessary. Iran and Saudi Arabia, they are always at odds with each other. Seen that? Iran is Shia majority country. Saudi leader of the Sunni world. Always in conflict. But India manages both ideologies very well. How and why India does that?
what happens to ideologies looks like ideologies do not matter when it comes to nation so what does it tell about tell us about national interest it's about pragmatism balancing different relationships can you think of any when india engages with the us what do what does india say our prime minister went to the us what did he say that you are the oldest democracy we are the largest democracy we are natural partners then why do we have good relations with russia is it a democratic republic no we have good relations with russia because it matters to us in the world of international affairs we have to manage countries manage aspirations we have had good relations with palestine and we have had good relations with israel at least in the past what does it say it says that national interests they transcends ideology isn't this what realist would also say you have to go back to your core classes on approaches to international relations what would kenneth waltz what would hans morgenthau say on this we have to use their names in the answers they will also align with this idea national interest are primarily about power it's about security because the world that we live in is anarchic it's an anarchic system and to survive we have to be power maximizers or security maximizers us china rapprochement during cold war anyone knows about that us china rapprochement during cold war we all know who were the main drivers during the cold war right us ussr us stood for what liberty freedom democracy capitalism ussr communist US was fighting a battle to ensure that capitalism win. Soviet was doing it to ensure that communism win. How would I how would realist view this? A realist would say that this ideology is nonsense. And that is true. Because if you think about it, why is US aligning with China? Becoming friends with China during the Cold War. That happened. China was a communist state. And why was China becoming friends with the US? Reproachment. They were not natural friends. But then they why were they becoming friends? Because the national interest aligned. Chinese wanted security against the Soviets. The alliances are all about security and survival. so according to realism countries they prioritize their survival above everything else if that means teaming up with a former rival they will do it these are the views of realists and i also give you the view of robert michel they are in law of oligarchy what does he think For any question that you stumble upon in your UPSC, PSI, or optional, think from various perspectives. The approaches that we have already mastered. What would realists say? What would idealists say? What would Marxists say? Quote the names: Hans Morgenthau, Kenneth Balls. They say national interest is about power and security in an anarchic world. explain that elaborate on why and how does that explain us china relationship during the cold war they are all aligning against a common threat the soviet union 
What about Marxist? What would they say about national interest? Yes, any wish? Sir, they will say it's all about economic interest. The, the... Yeah, they will not say power maximizing, security maximizing. They will say economic maximizing. They will say US invades Iraq. Why? For oil. They will say US invades Libya. Why? For oil. So don't you think national interest is extremely contested thing? It's a very complex. It's very complex. It's always evolving. Something that was national interest for us a few years ago, down the drain now. National interest is influenced by power structures, economic interests, ideologies to some extent, and changing global dynamics. So now the question is, how will you define national interest? So looks like it's not very easy to label others as anti-national or nationalist. No? Or is it easy? National interest is what a nation perceives as beneficial for its survival and prosperity. But again, it is shaped by various internal factors, external factors. But yes, it is extremely contested concept. Why? Because different groups, different theories, they interpret it very differently. And therefore, it's always debatable. So please write down a question that you could be asked in your exams. National interest is an essentially contested concept. Well, stop, comment. Here I want you to talk about realists with examples. I want to talk about iron law of oligarchy with examples. For examples, don't give example of India. Think of Pakistan or think of US. In US also you have those military industrial complexes. Indian example I gave you to talk about, you know, give you some context to what happens in reality. But don't quote that in examination. Adani ji and Modi ji, don't do that. That's a mistake. You don't be so naive. Talk about liberals. What will they think of it? National interest. For them, they will say, I think Euro European Union's integration is national interest. Emmanuel Kant would talk more about moral duty. Humanitarian concerns. But eventually you have to write that national interest is fluid, shaped by many, many factors. Okay, so I'm going to create breakout rooms and discuss this in breakout rooms. Can like uh, can you please tell the entire question? I think I couldn't write the last part of the question. Na national interest is an essentially contested concept. Explain. So essential contested oh. concept. Right. I think we can just brainstorm 